Dower Beach. So this is the poem for today to be explained. Dower Beach is an allergy. It is a very serious poem. And Dower Beach that separates England and France. Okay, that is Dover Beach. Dover Beach is composed by Matthew Arnold and Matthew Arnold was a poet of Victorian age. As we all are aware of the characteristics of Victorian age that this age was the age of doubt, was the age of perplexion, confusion, whether there is God or not. So today we are not going to discuss the characteristics of Victorian era that will take much more time. We have to understand here that Matthew Arnold, as I have told you that this is an allergy, okay, this poem is an allergy and what kind of allergy? Not personal allergy, but impersonal allergy. So if this poem is an allergy, this means that Matthew Arnold is very sad here and he is giving a description full of sadness full of materialism but uh, with the help of nature he is telling us that we all have lost the faith in the existence of God and uh, in the relevancy of religion. So Arnold he is this time he is so sad to feel the increasing materialism just like William Wordsworth, the world is too much with us. So he is also very unhappy to feel that the people, they are growing materialist. And there has come a lot atheism or doubt in their heart for God, for their religion. Dover Beach was published in 1867 and this poem in whole reflects uh, Arnold's sadness, his loneliness also. This poem is no doubt full of philosophy and uh, religious loss is even, even spiritual isolation. So this poem is so meaningful that I really don't have any idea where to start or how to brief, brief on this poem because uh, Arnold is so serious here that he is taking our attention to this point that this world has gone to darkness. If there is no belief, what he seems to say and what he presents here. So this poem describes the feelings of Arnold, actually the feelings of only one night. Arnold is standing in a hotel room. And uh, the window of uh, his room looks out on the seafront, okay, seafront that is Dover Beach. And he watches uh, that the sea of the English Channel, okay, the sea, the particular sea and that is the English Channel is calm, okay. The sea is calm tonight. The sea that is English Channel is calm, calm, peaceful. There is no restlessness. It is it is completely undisturbed. Come tonight. And uh, sea is receding from the earth. Means the waves are advancing. Okay. The waves are advancing and retreating. And they are carry, carrying with them the pebbles. Pebbles lying on the coast. So we find, we find here that... Uh, Religion also is receding from the world. Only the pebbles, that is the shingles of atheism and vices are left in the world. So you can feel yourself that how much serious the topic, the theme or the content of this poem has been presented by Matthew Arnold. In that era, in Victorian era, Arnold, he felt that if there is no religion, if there is no faith, then there will not be a humanity. There will be only an end of this world. There will only be a darkness all around 
us. So through this poem for the first time I myself came to know the relevancy, the importance of religion, the importance of faith or the importance of the, the belief in the existence of that supreme power that all these things are very very necessary for all of us otherwise what will be that uh, this is the reason that we all, all are going to depression or loneliness and that has been described very well by Arnold. So just uh, let us come to the text. Matthew Arnold he describes here in the very first stage of this elegy the beauty of the Dover beach. Okay? And uh, this was the time of moonlight night. So what he says, the sea is calm tonight. The tide, tide, tide is rise and fall. Rise and fall of the sea is full. The moon lies fair and moon is also looking very beautiful because it is the time of moonlight. Upon the straits, right, upon the straits that is the gulf means uh, on the French coast the light gleams and there on the French coast the light is shining, the light is gleaming and is gone. The light that gleamed now it is gone. The cliffs of England, cliffs that is the white hills, okay the white hills of the Dover coast, the cliffs of England stand glimmering the cliffs of England stand glimmering that is shining and vast and the cliffs of England are very vast and they are also shining out in the tranquil bay and where they are shining that is tranquil bay tranquil bay the bay is also very peaceful undisturbed and calm the sea is calm tonight the tide is full, the moon lies fair upon thy straits. On the French coast the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay. So here we find a beautiful description of nature at the time of night when the sea is calm and there is a moon in the sky. And he is also giving a beautiful pictorial description here when he mentions the cliffs of England. So Matthew Arnold, what he says through these lines that Dover Beach separates England and France is very calm this time. And it looks full of tide. It is moonlit night and its waves are rising, okay, rising high and the moon is also shining very beautifully on the narrow gulf of the sea right on the narrow gulf of the sea in the sea and there is a light on the French coast which shines for a moment and is gone and then it disappears okay is gone it disappears and the vast cliff vast cliffs of England are glimmering in peaceful and undisturbed way. So here Arnold he has presented a scene of pure natural loveliness. Come to the window, sweet is the night air, only from the long line of spray. So Arnold here is presenting a beautiful picture of seashore before his reader. And he is asking his companion, maybe his friend, maybe his wife, maybe his beloved to come out, come to the window because he is standing, uh, he is standing in a hotel's window. So this is why that uh, he is enjoying this beautiful scene of seashore, beautiful scene of nature and this is why that he is asking that particular companion to come and to join his company or to enjoy this beautiful scene of night. Sweet is the night air and this time the air of the night is also very pleasant, it is also very sweet. So Matthew Arnold, he wants his companion to enjoy this scene only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched 
land and just look look at the land because this time earth or land is also full of moonlight means the rays of the moon the silver rays of the moon are falling down on the earth and it is making its very beautiful and it seems as if she is meeting where with the moon the same idea we found in the world is too much with us also in the sonnet of william wordsworth listen okay and just listen listen the music of the sea the music of nature listen you hear the grating roar grating roar that is the harsh sound okay not the sweet sound but the harsh sound harsh sound produced by the pebbles grating roar of pebbles okay that is harsh sound or harsh music of pebbles so now that particular harsh sound is produced by the pebbles pebbles thrown on the sea shore by the waves which the waves sea waves draw back and the sea waves seems to take back those pebbles and fling and then throw them away at their return up the high strand strand high strand that is again sea shore so that is the action that is the doing of the sea waves they come and then they go back and when they come and go back at that time they seem to take the pebbles on the land they throw them out and in that doing the pebbles are making a lot of noise but that sound that noise is very harsh it is not uh, melodious it is not sweet at their return up the high strand and where they throw those pebbles the sea waves throw those pebbles at the sea shore and that is making a lot of harsh sound begin and cease cease that is stop okay is stop and then again begin so this procedure is being done by the sea waves to come and then to go with tremulous tremulous that is trembling vibrating cadence cadence poses in music is low the music of sea waves is vibrating or oh, it is trembling and it is it is seeming very is low and bring the eternal note of sadness the eternal note of sadness in so now the sea waves when they are bringing pebbles with them and throwing them on the sea shore that music is very harsh music it is a very slow music and it it seems as if there is an eternal note of sadness right so the seem this sound of the sea always appears very sad to tennyson also and now to matthew arnold also so addressing his companion his friend or his beloved arnold asks her to come to the window and the air of the night is very sweet and what he is asking that the sea at that time mingles with the land which is which is whitened by moon lit okay the moon blanched land and he asks her listen what he asks her or him to listen to the long line of the water drops that is scattered by the sea which the waves draw back and the sea waves draw with them pebbles then throw them out as they move once again and fling as they are return towards the sea shore so now the sea waves are producing a harsh sound on the pebbles because of this continuous process this vibrating slow musical sound created by the sea waves appears to be very sad to arnold and this sound of the sea waves brings to him an ever lasting sadness eternal note of sadness so through this we find that arnold giving the description of nature very gracefully by and by his coming to the sadness and that sadness is everlasting forever eternal immortal sadness 
and the the the, the music of sadness or the sound of sadness we can feel we can listen very well by the sea waves sophocles long ago heard it on the aegean and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery in this stanza we find arnold's classicism in sophocles sophocles was a greek dramatist and his famous drama oedipus rex is well known so sophocles sophocles drama also present the sound of the sea and that was very sad so here arnold is reminded sophocles and what he says aegean is the sea between greece and asia minor the sound of sea waves reminded sophocles of the confused and disturbed or disordered rise and fall of human misery ebb and flow that is ups and downs or rise and fall of human misery turbid that is confused or disordered and aegean is the sea it is the sea between greece and asia minor now we find also in the sound a thought sound the sound of the sea waves that is very sad and we we modern human beings thought there is also a thought hearing it it that is the sound by this distant northern sea so here arnold is standing on the northern sea northern sea of england and he says that we the modern people also hear the melancholy sound of human misery in the slow music of these waves these waves of sea does the sound of the waves the sad sound of the waves reminds arnold that once sophocles standing on the sea shore to he he had also had a similar experience and he was also reminded of human suffering so this thought or oh, this sadness was also heard by sophocles long ago and this time it is being heard by arnold and he is very sure that this eternal note of sadness can be heard even by the modern human beings if they want to be heard so that thought that thought of sadness is reminding arnold sophocles